sometime with God, sometime with family, Christmas. Jenny, I'm looking forward to the yeah. entire thing. Christmas, we're going <laughs> to celebrate that. I mean, lights are already going up in this place. You should yeah. come here. The it's space amazing. is really big. <laughs> get here, whatever you're doing, get ready. Rush to Nalia, service is about to start. Because yeah. guess what? Did you tell them? I haven't told them yet. I don't know if you know, I mean, but today for you we to have such them. a special guest in the house with us today. We have the honor to have Apostle Kalanzi in the house. The one of Grace We're City super, Church. We're super, super excited. For some of us who have, the, who have had the opportunity to go um all the way to mpiji where like yeah the movement started yeah. it was quite something we we're empowered uh i don't know we're so happy whatever is in stock for us today i don't know about you but we're super excited we want to thank Rebma and apostle for yes, just giving us an opportunity much. to experience great people too so we are really really bummed up for that True. so if you want anyone not to miss this you gotta share that link we're still live here in Nalia. People are still coming up. Uh, we can see the driveway is, is Yeah, is there's, cool, reserved, there's reserved parking and stuff. There are seats in the house. Guess yeah. what? If you can guess where we are right now, yeah. you get a front row seat in the service. Definitely. So drop that in the comments too. I mean, Definitely. we're going to get the word from Apostle Moses Kalanzi. He is yes. an anointed man of God from Grace City Church. Yes. And he has the word and it's loaded and packed for us. Yes. So get ready. Service is about to start. Come to Nalia or any other worship harvest location in your area. And yeah, have a blast. So just join with us to just welcome obviously the music team is about to get Take on I mean, our amazing worship away. team this side of heaven so i don't know about you so let's count five, five four three two one now let's get <laughs> you're welcome for garage this morning i'm going to ask you to get up and let's celebrate jesus together <laughs> is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Turn to somebody and tell them you are welcome to garage this story. No matter what I'm going through, I will breathe Him hard to open my mouth and breathe him. Just some trials will come my way, but I still praise him. Situations come around, I will praise him. No matter what, no matter what I go through, I will praise him. Makes him hard to open my mouth and praise him. Just some trials they come away, but I'll be praising. Situations come around, situations come around, but I'll be praising. Cause I know, cause I know. What I'm going through, I will praise Him. I will praise Him. It makes Him hard to open my mouth and praise Him. Tests and trials may come away, but I will praise Him. Situations come around. Situations come around. Praise Him. Go 
Cause I know, cause I know The victory is in my place He resides within my grace In all things, at all times I will praise Praise Him, praise Him In time to shout to the Lord God Almighty Praise Him And 
and his praises will continually be on my lips. Yes. Let me see somebody who is ready to praise the Lord this morning. Yay. Let's sing together. I bless the Lord all the time. His praise will ever be in my mouth. I bless the Lord all the time. His praise will ever be in my mouth. Let me hear you sing. I bless the Lord all the time. His praise will ever be in my mouth. I bless the Lord all the time.
So some people were singing, this is a feast of victory. Like smile. Can we just shout to the Lord? Let's give a shout of victory to the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that even as we say, this is a feast of victory. We actually mean it because God has been good to us. God has overwhelmed us. Let's just lift our voices to the Lord and celebrate him and thank him and say, thank you, Father. It's December. Who would have known I would be in this place? Thank you, Father, because you have loved us. Thank you, King of Kings, because you've, you've taken us places, oh God. Thank you, Father, because you have protected us. Thank you, King of Kings, because there is no other God but you. There is no other God besides you. There is no other God that we worship, and that's why we are in this place. Even for the guys online, I'm just going to encourage you to lift your voices, because we are in a feast of victory, and when you're having a feast, you actually participate. And so lift up your voice right now and say, Lord, we worship you. Lord, we glorify your name. Lord, we give you praise. We exalt you, oh God. We declare that you alone are God. We declare that there is no one besides you. We declare that you are a father, you are a friend, you are a king. And friends, I just want to invite us into a moment to just reflect on how much the Lord has done for us. The Lord has been good to us as a church. The Lord has been good to us as a people. The Lord has been good to us as families. The Lord has been good to us in so many ways, so many ways. I just want to draw us in, draw us in, collect your mind, just try and take away every form of distraction and think about the goodness of God. We're in December and there's so much, there's so much, there's so much that has happened, but God has been good to us. And then we are going to recite this together. Psalm 115 verse uh, 12 to 18. The Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. Just pause there. We're going to say this again. And after house of Israel, we'll also say the house of worship harvest. Yes. After the house of Aaron, you're also going to put your house name, okay? The Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of worship harvest. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless the house of the Kamaras. Say your name, say your name, your family name, the house of the Kamaras. I'm declaring because I'm on the microphone. The house of your name, your name, your name. Uh, we can move on to the next. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both small and great. May the Lord give you increase more and more, you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. I'm going to ask you to turn to your neighbor and declare 14 and 15 with intentionality. Remember that the words of our mouth actually hold power and the word of God is alive and active. So together, may the Lord give you increase more and more you and your children may you be blessed by the lord who made heaven and earth yes someone shout to the lord all right let's just continue to 16 to 16 to 16 the heaven even the heavens are the lord's but the earth he has given to the children of men the dead do not praise the lord nor any who go down into silence but we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord! Can I just hear another shout? Even as you lift up your voices to the Lord, because He has been good, because He has blessed us, because He is faithful, your household is blessed. He will take sickness from your midst. He will take infirmity out of your midst. He will take addiction out of your midst. He will bless you, O oh God, and He will cause you to overflow. He will cause you to be surrounded with goodness. He will cause you to be surrounded with favor because He has loved you. And so as you lift up your voices, just continue to declare, for He is good and His mercy endures forever. His faithfulness is unsearchable. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Soul, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. We bless you, Jesus, for your name is worthy of all our praises, and we give thanks to you. 
Lord, we say thank you. You crown this year with your goodness. You give grace. You give joy. We are grateful, Lord. Thank you. Be exalted. Be magnified. 
night, Lord. And this morning we sing of your goodness. We sing of your power. We sing of your might, Lord. The wondrous things that you are doing in our midst this morning. We say thank you for loving us. For chasing after us. For not giving up on us. <laughs> for loving us unconditionally, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. And we give our praise, our love, our adoration, our worship to you this morning. You are the Lord. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. All my days. I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful Somebody sing to Jesus Yeah. 
It is one thing to know that God is good. It's a completely different thing to know that that goodness is towards you. So let's make a shout to the Lord for His goodness. Wow. Hey. Good morning, everybody. I think I should keep you standing for just a little longer. Is that okay? Do I have your permission to keep you standing for just a little longer? Awesome. You guys are looking fabulous. Uh, first and foremost, I bring you greetings from Apostle and Rev. I thank God for those two people. Mm. You know, when I look around at this crowd and see the number of people who are in this room, and the number of people who are serving, and the number of people whose lives have gained significance, it all started many years ago when Apostle and Rev. Ma said yes to the call of God upon their lives. And so, Apostle Rev. Ma, we celebrate you. We thank God for you. Thank you so much for giving us a shot at significance. Of course, I have to send shout outs to all the other places, you know. Shout outs to all our 70 locations spread across the world. You see, I will not be forgiven if I live here without sending a shout out to Master Boo Boo. Ah! Pastor Angela, I salute you. I celebrate you. I love you. Ah! Some, some of you are getting annoyed. Look, also you, eh? when they invite you to host the service, and you have a hot shibubu, you will send your greetings, and I won't quarrel. In fact, I will clap. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Shout out to the Peculiar Network. All 11 churches. Special shout outs to Worship Harvest Bugolobi. I promised I would send you greetings, so I am sending greetings to Worship Harvest Bugolobi. I salute you. Thank you so much for sending me here. I am happy. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. We have a special group of people. I'm going to ask you to sit down. Just sit down. Have your seat. There's a seat for everyone. If you feel like you don't have enough room where you are sitting, there's the gallery. There's space there. The space there is a bit scanty, but there's space there. There is space there. If you want to go and stand on the sides and walk and pray while the service is happening, feel free. Yeah? Yeah. So, there's a special group of people. There's a story in the Bible about Abraham. Abraham, well, Abraham is seated in front of his tent and he sees three men approaching. Right? And immediately he discerns that this is God. So, he goes and slaughters a calf, asks his wife to make some cakes. Alright? So that he can receive the men of God who had come into his house. The same three men went to Sodom and Gomorrah and they were not received that way. They were received a bit differently. And because they were received a bit differently, Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed and yet Abraham got his promise that he had been waiting for for 25 years accelerated to receive it in a year. The Bible tells us to receive guests because by doing so, some have entertained angels. So if you are here worshiping with us for the very first time at Worship Office, I want you to slip your hand up so that we can celebrate you. Are you here? Hey! Come on! Make them feel welcome. I mean, go all Abraham on them. Slut, slaughter the fattened calf. Ask your wife to make some cakes. Let us celebrate them. Thank you so much for joining, to worship, joining us to worship this Sunday. Um, it is hard for me to leave my church. To go somewhere else. Yeah. But I celebrate those of you who have come from different churches. Send our greetings back to your churches. Those of you who are coming to church for the first time, I used to celebrate you. Thank you for joining us. I just want us to remind ourselves of who we are at Worship Harvest. At Worship Harvest, we are a movement of the gospel, discipleship, and mission. And our purpose is catalyzing spiritual, social, and economic renewal in our immediate communities and as a result, the world. Here we believe that church begins on Monday and Sunday is garage time. Pip, pip. And now I'd like you to 
turn your attention to the screens because I'm going to swing over this information to the media team who are going to keep us updated with what is happening in Worship Harvest last week, this week, and in the future. Over to you, media team. Take it away. Movers and shakers. The real purpose of movers and shakers is to raise a generation of incredibly great men. It's to speak purpose and hope. There is a place for you in God's mighty army that is transforming the world. The reality is that we are all fighting with something. But God has chosen us. It's that time of the year when we come together as family to celebrate Christmas. This year we have Christmas at Worship Harvest. Come with family on the 24th for the Christmas Eve service at 5 p.m. and we'll crown it with a Christmas service on 25th December, 9 a.m. at all Worship Harvest locations. you thank you for a glorious year thank you for your of increase thank you for your promotion thank you for year of excellence the year of acceleration we bless you thank you for salvation thank you for new churches for new church buildings new mission communities new marriages new babies new businesses we bless you Lord. the limitation of the grace of God upon your life is that disciples you have not met. God is not limited in his supply. God is only limited by the user. My sense in my spirit is that God is going to do it again Amen. next year. Hi, my name is Jeremy. And my name is B3. We want to welcome you to the month of December, the last month of the year where we like to celebrate and remember the things that God has done for us this year. And Pastor B3 and I want to share with you five big things that God has done for us this year. First on the list, this February, we welcome the fourth addition to our family, mm -hmm. Baby Irembo, beautiful. She has yeah. added so much color to our lives. And we are thankful to God for our healthy new baby. Uh -huh. And then last November, we started building. Can you imagine? Yeah. And we are almost done with the house in about a year. Talk about acceleration on Come this on ministry. Now. I'm so thankful for being in a ministry like Worship Harvest where there's a lot of acceleration. And we are nearly done with the house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And third on the list, I became an author for the fourth Come on time. Now. Oh, yes. <laughs> this very year. In August, on my birthday, I released my fourth book, Build Your Arsenal, mm. which has already, you know, gone out there and is such a blessing yeah. to so many people. Very thankful to God for that. And then mm -hmm. we became pastors of the third location, Worship Harvest Gayaza. Can mm -hmm. you imagine? We are leading at Worship Harvest Gayaza now yeah. from Worship Harvest downtown. A beautiful church with a beautiful cathedral. Come on so now. many lovely people. I mean, I was just thinking about it yesterday and realizing that the mechanics have actually grown. We used to have about 17 mechanics mm -hmm, when we started, mm -hmm. and now we have over a hundred people yes. serving at garage every week. There are so many testimonies of restored marriages, 
people who are unemployed getting jobs and so many other things God is doing at Worship Harvest Gayaza. Absolutely. And not just beyond Worship Harvest Gayaza, we have the privilege of leading the High Flyers Network. Oh, yeah. Greetings. Come on now. And we planted four new locations. Yes. This year, Worship Harvest Ibanda, mm -hmm. Worship Harvest Kavale, Worship Harvest Mperewe, yep. and Worship Harvest Maganjo. Oh, and yes. those locations are beacons of life and hope in their communities. You're hearing stories of transformation, mm -hmm. families being reunited. Yeah. You're hearing people getting delivered from all sorts of issues, salvations. Ah, it's amazing. I mean, yeah. it's just God has done so much this year, and we are very grateful. Yeah, and you know, we, we just want to ask you the same question. What are some of the things that God has done for you in the year 2022? Mm -hmm. Just take some time off and write down those things and just give thanks to God. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 65 verse 11, you crown the year with your goodness and your paths drip with abundance. Amen. That scripture, yeah. I love it. I, I stand on it every end of year. And it's something that we are thinking on, even as we come to the end of the year. Mm. Look back with gratitude. Yeah. What has God done? But also look forward with hope. Mm -hmm. Believe God that this year is going to end at the biggest, I don't know, the biggest and best things are coming at the Amen. end of the year. And we want to speak into that right now. We want yeah. to pray with you, mm -hmm. you who is watching. Father, we thank you for every yes. person who is listening or yes. watching today. We thank you that you've sustained us through the year 2022 for every difficulty that you've carried us through, yeah. for every victory that you have given us, for every joy that you have brought our way, yes. we remember and we give thanks, mm. O oh God. And we look forward with hope as we stand on your yes. word that you indeed crown the year with your goodness and mm. you make our paths to drip with abundance. May we see our biggest victories yet. May we see our biggest promotions yet. May our mouths be filled with testimony. Mm. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much and God bless you. Remember to give thanks for the things God has done. Bye. Bye. Thankful in the house today. I don't see you clapping. Is someone thankful? Hello. Ish. Yeah, even me, I want to thank God. We made one year in marriage. Yes. Even you, when you have a microphone. Hey. <laughs> Wow. Well, before us, we have an MC called Groundbreakers Mission or Community. Come on, someone, welcome them. Yes, from Worship Harvest Kirinya. Yes. And the leader is Winnie Nabanja. Winnie, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. You very much. Thank you very much for leading, being a spiritual parent. And are there any spiritual parents in the house today? Come on now. MC leaders, let me see you waving. Hey, shh. Some of them are hiding. I see you. <laughs> You're very, very welcome. Thank you. Tell me, what, what has leading done to you as an individual? Uh, first of all, I want to thank God for this opportunity to be before you. It's an honor. I am so humbled. But ultimately, uh, I want to thank God for, for the gift of leadership, for, for enabling me to lead this group of people you see here. It's been an honor. It has, it has been an amazing journey. I couldn't ask for anything more. Hey, come on. How about you? What are you leading? Ash, okay. So tell us, are there any stories of transformation within your MC? Oh, yes, mm -hmm. very many. Uh, first of all, I want to thank God for that gift uh, for, for our leaders, uh, Reverend Ma and Abmo, for this space, for their space of leading, of being able to impact people. Uh, this, as you see, my group of people, they are basically the way you see them, but uh, God has used them tremendously, and we have seen life transformed. Life transformed. Uh, right next to me is, is my apprentice. He's called Pastor Ambrose. <laughs> yes, yes. He's going to tell his story briefly. Pastor Ambrose, could you please tell this amazing team about your story? Praise God, Judge. Amen. Yes, as well, my name is Ambrose. Uh, for me, it's a privilege to be part of Worship Harvest. 
because Worship Harvest is such a church that is different from other churches. So I joined Chirinya Groundbreakers through our pastor, Pastor Winnie. So she was on mission. Okay, she, she had gone for evangelism is when she met me. And when she met me, I was also, okay, I was willing and I had that virtue in me of, okay, I wanted to join a church, but I never had a church that I was going to. So she met me, she asked me to give my life to Christ and I gave my life to Christ. So my story is, back home, we are children. Okay, we are four children. We stay four. We don't have a mom, but we stay with our dad, and it's not full time at home. So, as we stay, we stay. I stay with my little sisters, cause I'm the one leading them. So, she met us. She met us, and okay. She, she took that space of being our mother because yeah she mothered us she has been there for us whenever okay, we feel okay there's a time where you feel like there is that love that you miss of that mother love but she has tried to fill it up for the more years that we have yeah but this time I have been schooling and it has not been well of the tuition. So the, the time started, I went to school, but I never had that money for school fees. So I never told her because I, I don't want to burden her because she's already our mother. Okay. She took that of being our mother. So I never wanted to tell her that, you know, I'm missing school fees and what. So I never told her. So one time she phoned me home when it was school time. Then she asked me, why, why, why are you home? And I told her, okay, it's all about school fees. Then she said, oh, how much is it? Then I told her an amount of money that is not correct, okay? Because I never wanted to give her that the correct amount because I, for me, I thought that it was much, so I never wanted to burden her. So I told her, because I was expecting to get some balance of it. So she gave me the money, but for instance, I never got the balance. <laughs> so I never qualified to do the exams, though, okay, for my kept quiet, I never told her that I never did the exams. So it's one of our members who told her that our pastor isn't doing exams. Why is it so? So she called me, we were from MC. She called me and she asked me why. Okay, it was hard to explain because she asked me so. I told her pastor, it's such a situation that, okay, I never wanted to burden you because of money. What? Then she said, okay, so you go to school, then you ask whether they can give you exams. Okay, exams had moved on, so it was okay for three weeks of the exams. So it was hard. I went to school. I asked. They were like, it's impossible. You can't do the exams because time has gone. So what I did, okay, I got that idea. It was the Holy Spirit leading me. So I went to the head teacher. I went to him. I spoke to him. I talked to him. And, okay, by the grace of God, he asked, he, okay, he, he permitted me to go to another class even, okay, even when I never did the exams. So I want to thank God for our mama, Pastor Winnie, because she has been there for us. And I thank God for Apmo, Pastor Harry, and all. Yeah. Wow. Okay, I know we are out of time, but I would like you to summarize his story because I know that yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, uh, the next one of our members is Gideon. Yeah, I'm going to summarize his story. Uh, Gideon's story is about his mom. Uh, his mom fell ill. She was attacked with pressure, so she was bedridden. Yeah, she, they, took, they took the mom to hospital. 
but who were able to stand with her. I want to thank God. Through my, uh, my, my leaders, I have an amazing team of young leaders. Um, Pastor Jeremiah. Pastor Jeremiah stood with Gideon. We are praying throughout the night. We, we encourage him to fast. We fasted with him. And we thank God as we speak. Uh, Gideon's mother is well. She's back home. Uh, we thank God. We thank God for the amazing things God is doing through us. Wow. Thank you, Winnie. Thank you so much. Wow. Come on, guys. Let's thank God for these amazing testimonies. We really want to thank God for the opportunity to make change in lives, real practical change. And MC is a space where this can happen. So if you're one of those who needs a space where you belong, yes, you can go back to the back at the end of the service and you can sign up to join an MC. Thank you so much. Yes, come on now. Thank you, guys. Wowza, 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 what a story. Eish. I just want you to imagine with me a future where we have about 50,000 missional communities. And you get 50,000 stories like this every Sunday. 50,000 salvations every week. Imagine with me. It all starts with you joining an MC or starting one. And we can all do it. All right? Right, a few announcements I'd like to make. We're going to have our very last mega movers and shakers garage on the 11th. So movers and shakers garage is for the young, both physically, and if you feel you are young, show up. Those who don't show up, we will know how you see yourself. Yeah. So our last garage is going to be on the 11th. And also our at Christmas Eve, this, this year Christmas lands on a Sunday, right? That's a very rare thing. So we're going to have a Christmas Eve service on the 24th, as usual. Then we shall have a Christmas service on the 25th. So we're going to have services everywhere. Awesome. So invite your friends, invite your family. There are those people who go to church only on Easter and Christmas. So invite them, and they shall be here with us. All right? Right. Right now, we're going to have an opportunity to give. And it's one of the ways we worship God with our giving. The word, the word of God tells us, don't come into the house of the Lord empty-handed. And so we worship God with our substance. Prepare your offering. If you need an envelope, put up your hand. Somebody will get it to you. And then we're going to be able to give this morning. All right? So as we prepare to give, I'm going to invite that amazing worship team to come. Where's the worship team at? They're going to come behind and they're going to lead us in a song. If you're going to give online, our MTN numbers are 0778-618-418. I repeat, 0778-618-418. And for Airtel, it's 0758-618-418. I repeat, 0758-618-418. Our Momo number, Momo Merchant Code is 148722. 148722, I repeat. And Airtel Pay is 116-0032. I repeat, 116-0032. You can also give on our website at worshipharvest.org slash give. There are many ways to give. Don't say we didn't give you an opportunity. And as you prepare to give, I want to pray over our giving. And Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to worship you with our tithes and offering these so much that you've done for us that we cannot even begin to say thank you so receive this small token of appreciation for all that you have done for us and as we saw that seed may you bless the seed that we may get a bountiful harvest and come back with so much more to give towards the growth of the ministry in the mighty name of jesus we have prayed and everybody said awesome
Christ. That's one of my favorite seasons of the year. It's Christmas. Where we celebrate the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is how salvation comes to the world. And so we celebrate this season. Prepare for it. Get excited about it. Sing into it. Laugh into it. Invite others to celebrate with you in it. This morning I have a very big task. To introduce the preacher of the word. You know, there are great people, then there are great people. There's a, one of those, I think it is Greek folklore, where they talk about a guy called Midas. Some of you read it as Midas. Midas prayed to the gods and they gave him a gift such that everything he touched turned to gold. The person I'm going to introduce, introduce to us this morning has got a Midas touch. You know, God gave him a church and he built the church, built the church, built the church and got about 70 people. Yeah, 70 some of you are saying, 70, look, your mission community has three people. Da, 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 look. Yeah. He built his church to 70 people. You're not clapping. <laughs> After that, he entered certain spaces where he learned a few things. And he didn't just learn a few things. The anointing of God fell on him. And in one year, he multiplied those 70 to over 20,000. One year. I don't know. Maybe it is his name. You see, in the Bible, there was a man called Moses. Moses was sent by God to go and set the people free from Egypt, the, ca the captives free from Egypt. And when he walked into Egypt, there were two. There was Moses and Aaron. If you want to count his stick, there was Moses, his stick, and Aaron. By the time he left Egypt, there were two million. So ladies and gentlemen, the man that I'm introducing to you this morning is a man with an anointing for multiplication. And as we have learned from our apostle, he has taught us that how do you get the anointing? By seeing the anointed. By listening to the anointed. Yeah? By serving the anointed. There are many ways. We have by serving with the anointing. We have an opportunity today to tap into an anointing for multiplication. So without further ado, I'd like to invite us to put our hands together and welcome Apostle Moses Kalanzi. Hallelujah. Help me appreciate Dr. Emma, Dr. Pastor Emma. Today is an exciting day. I was telling my wife this morning that the place where I'm ministering today is where it all started. Hallelujah. Let's start with prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. 
The Bible says that the entrance of thy word brings light and understanding. Illumination, Lord. As we start tonight teaching from your word, I want you to teach. Lord, I'm praying that you be present and that you encounter us since we are in an encounter service. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Now, at Worship Harvest, we are a movement of the gospel, discipleship, and mission. And church begins on Monday. Sunday is garage time. Most of the work happens in missional communities where we get to see people saved, where we eat together, play together, and we go on mission together. And this week, we had a total of 340 salvations. Hallelujah. Hope me appreciate Worship Pavis Makerere with 37 salvations. Worship Harvest Downtown with 35 salvations. Worship Harvest Bugolobu with 30 salvations. Worship Harvest Nalia with 26 salvations. Worship Harvest Wairaka with 21 salvations. Worship Harvest ECT. NTV Central, 15 salvations. Worship Harvest Busega, 13 salvations. The good people in Nairobi had 12 salvations. Worship Harvest Nairobi. Worship Harvest Ginger, 11 salvations. Worship Harvest Chigali with 11 salvations. Hallelujah. I can't go through all of them, but we had a total of 340 salvations this week. Hallelujah. We thank Jesus. At the Grace City Church, every week we have an average of 350 salvations every week. When the data sheet comes in, the thing that I'm most interested in, the thing that I first look at before I look at the money column is the salvations. Because that's mission. Hallelujah. And when I go to see the salvations happening here, I'm excited. Hallelujah. The things that excite God are salvation souls. Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated. So this month, we are looking at a series where everyone gets to play. I've been following it and I've been watching it uh, in my time. And tonight, I'm very privileged to share the word with you. Hallelujah. But allow me honor up more in a special way for granting me the opportunity to minister this, this morning. I have ministered in over 30 churches this year because he has turned my life around. Amen. So I have to compose myself. <laughs> in a home, everyone has a role to play, and sometimes these roles are based on one's level of maturity. And as Christians, we know that maturity is measured by fruit. So what makes a family strong is when everyone is playing their role well. Now, excuse me, it appears as if I'm reading, but all these things the Holy Spirit has inspired me. So I write the notes. If I start talking without my notes, we can end at midnight. So if inefficiency in one area, we mean that as a family, we are delayed in achieving what God has already done for us. Therefore, it's very important that, that we all work together in hoping each, uh, each one of us play their role well. If I refuse to remind the person fetching water to do his work, it might mean that in the home, the lunch will be delayed because I'm the one doing the cooking. Sometimes I have to help them do their work well so that I can succeed in my role. My role is to support another family member in their role because we win together. 
everyone playing in their designated roles for the season moves the mission forward. And tonight, I'm going to be talking about the place of assignment and how important this is. Amen. So when God created us, he put us in a family. God knows that for us to achieve the purposes of his creation, he had to put us in a family. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 68, verse 6, that he puts the solitary in families. God likens a person who is not in a family to a person who is bound. And when you are in a family, you are a free person. Means a free person can then achieve the purpose of their creation. Jesus was also grafted into a family for the divine purpose to be accomplished. So the family is a place of becoming. As disciples, we are in family on mission together. God knows that whatever he has created for us can only be nurtured in a discipleship environment, in a home with spiritual parents. We are spiritual beings with a divine mandate. We must be spiritually nurtured to accomplish this divine purpose. To do this, God gives us spiritual parents mandated and empowered to guide us on this journey. I almost cried a tear when I saw the young man here honoring her pastor. And, and, and helping us understand how much important the missional community is. Life on life together. Somebody coming in to intervene when education is, is not working out. Amen? I don't know what we'll be doing without missional communities. I don't know what I would be without missional communities and discipleship. The thing that has turned my life around has been discipleship. Receiving affirmation that you matter, that, you, that there's something about you, um, being encouraged, being supported, it's happening in a discipleship environment. Amen. The biggest lie that the devil has sold to us is that we are homo sapiens, that we are human beings. We are spiritual beings who need spiritual parents. We believe in the lie of human rights. There's nothing right about it. We are spiritual beings. We are not homo sapiens, kind of beings. You know when they say we are human. No, now, let's put the spiritual things aside. We are now human. That's carnality. That's a lie. We call ourselves human beings and that's a big lie. Purpose is nurtured in a family, but that family is on a mission. So you need to be on the mission to realize that purpose. If you are not in a family, you are bound. Hallelujah. So we are sent beings who are spiritual. We never came from some animal living in a forest like the devil wants us to believe. Eh? The wisdom of the world, that we came from monkeys. I'm not a descendant of some apes. Hallelujah. The Bible says that I was created fearfully and wonderfully. In the image and in the likeness of God. The wisdom of the world is convincing us that we are apes. When somebody distorts your origin, they are distorting your purpose. They are saying you have no purpose. I don't know of an ape that has a purpose. Hallelujah. That's what we teach. Some people are so qualified even at university. They are professors of things like this. Hallelujah. So we all have roles at each stage in our lives, and we need spiritual parents who can guide us through these roles at each stage. We also need to understand that we are on mission together. You're not the only person going somewhere. You're created to, uh, to play a role, but you have others you're playing with. Everyone is doing something within the family to get you somewhere in your mission. Every army has different regiments with specific roles. Every team has different members with different roles. In the army, a person's role changes based on the strategic needs of the group at a particular time. You cannot keep serving in the kitchen when the situation requires you to carry the gun. Even the guys in the engineering brigade must be made to understand that at a certain time they might be required to run tanks. Every disciple should be aware that they will be deployed at a different place at a specific time as need requires based on the mission strategic priority. So today I could be a mission leader, mission community leader, but tomorrow I could be a network leader. As the mission's strategic priorities get to change, 
my role gets to change. It is not that I'm going to be a mission or community leader for all, all time. Hallelujah. That you get this MVP award for being the best mission or community ever, community leader ever. So, again, don't be dismayed when you are redeployed or record as soon as you have been deployed. Remember, we are in a spiritual battle, which means roles change fast. Roles change fast because we are in a spiritual battle. The Bible doesn't say in the book of Ephesians that we do not play against flesh and blood. The Bible says we do not wrestle. It's a battle. One of the things that the devil has convinced us that is we are living a life where there is no antagonism, that we are kind of beings. The moment you are convinced about your carnality, you are being de derailed, you are being denied the opportunity to see things in a different perspective. We are in a battle. We are spiritual beings sent here to enforce the will of the Father. Carnality makes us comfortable, and that's how the devil defeats us. Hallelujah. So, a coach can make a tactical decision to deploy you in another position. Don't say for me, I'm a goalkeeper. The one who puts you there knows your capacity. One of the things people don't know is that there is a spirit, spirit parents are experienced in knowing your abilities. It is part of their assignment as a coach. Now, I'm talking as a coach. Am I a certified coach? Yeah. The English FA. I'm a representative of the Stanley Matthews Football Foundation in Africa. So, when I talk football, I played football, so I know what I'm talking about. So, it's part of the assignment as a coach to not only study your progress, but to know your strength and weakness. A coach, knows, a coach knows which players to trust with which positions. If you have been trusted as a location pastor in this season, it's because it was based on the team's strategic priorities. You possess the ability to steward that role. Don't whine. As a disciple, I must continue growing, acquiring knowledge to be able to keep up, to keep in sync with the changes in the army. That's why the refresher courses in the army, the reason why you're being forced to read books and listen to audios is because your promotion and deployment is near. That's why you're being coerced to read books. I didn't know why we are being tasked to read books and listen to audios. You feel like, you know, until I realize how much capacity has been added to me in so short a space of time that I'm required to preach in many places almost every week. That's how you can then appreciate what somebody has been doing for you. Hallelujah. The army commander was instructed your network leader to challenge you to the occasion, has in mind your promotion from that insignificant role of an MC leader to maybe a cluster leader or a network leader or a movement leader in the times to come. Because you are so loved, no one loves you who will deploy you in the middle of fire without you having the requisite light to contend with the forces that challenge what God has called you to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a stupid general who deploys untrained civilians against an experienced force. Our enemy has had the experience of fighting against human beings, against the sent ones. He's called the old serpent. He has mastered human behavior and he knows how to make us fail in the mission. The thing we forget all that which the devil succeeds in convincing us is that we are not spiritual beings that the battle is physical. The battle is not physical. The battle is spiritual. And the mission is a spiritual endeavor. Hallelujah. So what we do is engage in a spiritual battle with a carnal mindset. We can't respond to a spiritual battle with reckless carnality. There is trouble. One needs to know that their role is part of a grand plan to outwit the enemy and enforce the will of the Father. To enforce the will of the Father, we must adhere to the standard and blueprint he has given to us. You are in trouble as a child of God when you digress from the battle plan, when you choose to do what you like while in the enemy territory. Remember, we are sent people with the mission of expanding and establishing the kingdom here. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are colonizers. When John speak, Barton and Grant discovered Uganda, they had to report back to their nation through their designated superiors, supervisors, the Royal Geographical 
society. There was nothing geographic about it. They were the Royal Strategic Society. These guys were working in sync with the Church Missionary Society. We are working in sync with the British East African Company to bring the influence of their queen, thy kingdom come, to Uganda. That's the reason why we are speaking English. So they signed treaty with African chiefs and influenced the rise of new nations. APMO has spoken here that there are nations that are yet to be established. And our spiritual destiny, prophetic destiny, is nations, not villages. So there are nations that are going to be nations in the next 100 years. And God is calling us into these nations. Amen. I hope many people here know that our prophetic destiny is nations, not villages. Amen. See how they played well together their mission that today we laugh at a person who doesn't speak their language well. We have been colonized. Culture, we, culture has been spread. This is the purpose of our creation, to take that culture, the Jesus culture, to many places. We are colonizers also, men sent on mission. When everyone gets to play their role well. Hallelujah. How do I, as a disciple, see myself as a colonialist going to Zimbabwe and establishing a worship harvest location there and keeping my spirit as in Kampala updated on everything, including knowing the economic viability of that land? Do you know that our gold was discovered by colonialists and all the maps and information about us was developed and designed by them? They know what we have where. There's even a place in Entebbe where maps and titles for every piece of land in Uganda are made. Some people recently flew to the UK to determine the extent of some of the boundaries in Uganda. <laughs> Colonialism, which is bringing the, the influence of their kingdom down here, that for many ages, they still determine things for us. That is what God sent us here for. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It sounds ridiculous, but that's how far a group can go when they choose to bring the kingdom into another territory. You are in trouble as a player when you change the game plan. You can't be too excited as a defender and forget your command post just because you are taller and you can head in the goals. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is a reason why those shots have numbers and the field is zoned into defense, midfield, and attack. The primary responsibility of an attacker is to attack, and if they are not bringing in the goals, we have people on the sidelines wearing bibs who can replace you to do what you actually fail to do. Everyone gets to play. Are we talking about a game? Somebody's asking, where is the scripture? It is coming. Hallelujah. Now, you are not replaced because they don't like you, no. You are actually replaced because they like you. <laughs> Whenever you are not playing your role well, you are not helping the team to win. And although you want to be, you to, everyone to be given a chance to play, the minutes you have played are enough for that chance. The substitute may not be better than you. That's the reason why he started the game. But it's the one we need to win. Maybe you are tired or injured. And the reason why you are tired is because you've been working hard on the mission. And in the course you are injured, we love you so much to rest you until the next match. Remember, everyone gets to play. But also, as you know, football is much more than fun. Somebody's life depends on it. There is a guy called a manager or a coach who is paid to win. In the army, there are demotions and the thing called the katebe, where you are rendered useless for some time if you are not doing the will of the commander. Hallelujah. So three things, important things to note, that there, we are in a match or a battle, and that it's a spiritual battle. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. It does not say we do not play. Number two, to know that we each have a role to play, and we play to win, not to lose. Even Brazil, where they are known to play the most exciting football called samba, their purpose is to win. When I was still at Makere, we used to say, we either win or they lose. There was nothing else in between. 
There is no negotiation about who is winning. In my zone, I have to support the team to win. There is a place of assignment. On the turf, we don't have cheerleaders. They are always in the stands. And in the church, we don't have stands. Everyone gets to play. Maybe it's the angels who cheer us. Hallelujah. Number three, that there is a blueprint for us to follow. The best players are those who follow the blueprint, not those who are extra talented. You are an ex excellent player when you use your extra talent within the framework of the instructions given to you. I could also tell you this, that the most talented players sometimes don't make it to the team because they want to play their own way, not the coach's way. Because they are not the ones who choose the team, they don't play. Somebody chooses the team. We must listen to instructions. Yes, you are Esther, you are beautiful. Thank you so much. But you need to listen to Mordecai because where you are in the palace, you are not there on your own volition. Somebody had to influence the Enoch, Haggai, to give you advice on how to get there. You are there not for yourself, you are there for a purpose. The preservation of the people of Israel under the subjugation of another nation, that's the reason why you are there. Don't be too excited about your beauty. There is a role to play. Hallelujah. So let's look at scripture. So the first part of that was to get you ready to have an understanding of what I'll be preaching about. And I'm preaching about the place of assignment. The book of Esther, chapter 2. The Bible talks about a man called Mordecai who was always at the king's gate. Over ten times it is mentioned Mordecai who was at the king's gate. Every one of us has a position where we do our assignment. Mordecai was the de facto leader of the Jewish people under foreign subjugation. But his position was at the gate, yet he was the leader. Humility. To move the mission forward, everyone must be comfortable in the place where they are. Mordecai, who was the leader of the movement, was at the king's gate. It was at the king's gate that Mordecai was able to influence the selection of Esther as the queen. It was at the king's gate that Mordecai was able to know about the plot to, to kill King Ahasuerus, the same plot that led him to his lifting. The place of assignment is a place of lifting. It doesn't matter how bad it looks. We must be comfortable where we've been placed. Where we've been placed by the commander of the army is the very best place where the purposes of God in a particular dispensation of time can be birthed. You cannot promote yourself. You can only be promoted. You have no opportunity to promote yourself. Hallelujah. So the place of assignment is the critical position in which the purposes of God are birthed through a person within a particular dispensation of time. It's a position in which I must stand and fight from for the team to win. I must have the humility to stay deployed in this position until my assignment changes and I'm deployed into a different place. Just because you can preach well doesn't mean that you can be deployed anywhere else apart from, you can't be deployed anywhere else apart from preaching. Again, because we are disciples, we need to be certain that we don't deploy ourselves, that there's somebody with the task, wisdom, and blueprint who deploys us. Somebody always knows you better than you know where best you can be useful in the mission. You can only shine from a certain position. But it could not even be about shining. It's about your strategic priorities as a family. Where can we place who? for us to win. Hallelujah. Amen. Mordecai had a place of assignment which was at the king's gate. God deployed him there to ensure that the nation of Israel is preserved. Mordecai was the commander of all Israelites in the empire of Ahasuerus, but he was a gatekeeper and a scary. The place of assignment for Mordecai was the gate. Unknown to many people, God is a military strategist. The Bible calls him the king of heaven's armies. He chose the gate as the place where the mission could be plotted from. In some institutions, the most powerful people are hidden. 
There's a thing called influence. It was at the gate that Mordecai influenced the selection of Esther. I think you also know that Esther's ascension to the throne was a matter of deployment. She wasn't just there by herself. Somebody discipled her. Somebody influenced the selection. The Bible says that Esther did nothing against the advice of Haggai. It means that a person who has a father who's looking out for their interest is in a far better position than a person with none. All the other girls could not get there because they didn't know the thing that could open the king's heart. But Haggai knew. And Haggai was on the orders of Mordecai. Mordecai was a strategist who had an influence, who had a team of people looking out for the interests of, of God in the palace of Ahasuerus. Do you know that there are people who control kings? Men like Daniel who served several kings. Men like Joseph, men like David, who when he played the harp, the king was sorted. Hallelujah. It's an anointing. And tonight, I want us to tap into it. Amen. You can't influence Unix when you are not in a strategic position. You must be somewhere to do certain things. Some people want to influence kings, but they can't lead the location. You can start by influencing an LC chairman if you are a location pastor, before you think about advising the president of Uganda. It was at the gate that Mordecai detected the plot to kill the king. An outsider can't know certain things, but because he had a strategic position, he was protecting the place, his vintage position allowed him access to information which others couldn't have. Do not take for granted the position where you have been placed. What you know is not what everyone knows. And what you know, you know it for a reason. The place where you are deployed is a place of your significance. Because of staying at the gate, you are put in the book of remembrance. You can rise above certain people, including your enemies, by just staying in position where God has put you for a reason in a season. While Haman flashed around pomp and glamour, Mordecai stayed at the gate with humility. What I'm trying to say is that we are fighting a battle as we serve the Lord, and the old serpent is against us, and the best way we can defeat him is by playing to the book through staying where we are deployed. We need to have the humility to stay where we've been assigned to be able to bring victory to the team. When Esther tried to play it safe, saying, you know what, I'm a queen, blah, 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 Mordecai came and told her, look here, young lady. Somebody got you there. You may not be privy to the circumstances under which we, took, we put you there, but we made you. We are kingmakers. So you are there for something. The reason why it is you, not the other girls, was because we needed to do something there. So you have to do it. Mordecai reminded her. Hallelujah. That it's not about what we feel about the assignment at hand. Please, let's put feelings and emotions aside. They are so good, but not in the mission. Hallelujah. Because when your enemies are attacking you, even if you cry, they're not going to stop attacking you. We can put our carnality aside and be spiritual people. Hallelujah. He told her that just as he stayed at the gate and played his role getting her there, it was her turn to play her role to get the team to win. When everyone plays their role, the team gets to win. In this plot, even the chief Henik Haggai was part of the plot. But the most important thing I'm talking about this morning is in Esther chapter 6, verse 12. Humility, the key to help us stay in our place of assignment. The Bible says, afterward, Mordecai went back to the king's gate, but Haman now, that, that only thing is what I'm interested in. Afterward, Mordecai went back to the king's gate. So register that in your mind, because I'm going to be preaching about it. So, the book of remembrance is brought out. The king remembers 
that a man provided a solution to his kingdom. And he said, what should be done for this man? A man called Haman is called on to come and advise the king on what should be done. You know, Haman was the one who was behind the plot by Big Tana and Tereth to overthrow Ahasuerus because Haman was power hungry. Now he is brought in to advise the same king he wanted to overthrow. So he's asked, what shall it be done for the man that the king pleases? You see, kings lose sleep. Are you aware? Kings lost sleep over three times in the Bible, according to the book of Daniel, where there was a problem. Whenever there is a problem in the palace, somebody is being lifted. Daniel solved problems for kings. Joseph solved problems for kings. David solved problems for kings. We see Mordecai solving a problem for a king. There's something about kings having certain problems, and the children of God have been anointed and established to solve these problems. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 2 verse 2 that in those days the mountain of the Lord is how shall be established over the top of the other mountains, including the mountain of governance. That there shall be a need for priests who shall help kings. And now the time has come. We are in Kenya this weekend, this week, and I saw that the second lady who is the wife of the vice president is a tongue speaking demon chasing woman and she said my ministry is in the court the times have come these are the times we've been predicting i've been talking about these things for long this revival is going to usher people into certain positions where they are going to determine the fate of the church in the nations they carry the daniel anointing hallelujah When I leave my notes, I become useless. <laughs> so Mordecai, Haman is brought in and they say, what should it be done? Then Haman says, uh-huh. Let him be given the royal robe, the mantle of kingship. And then the king writes the royal robe. Let him be given the royal crown. Then the king writes the royal crown. Then what else, Mr. Haman? The king says, uh, Haman says, um, there's that Benz, Mercedes, and those cars, the lead cars. Let him be given the, the royal horse so that he, he, there are sirens, so that they know that this is the man. And then the king said, the royal entourage. And then he said, is there another thing, Mr. Haman? Haman says, um, to make this victory sweet, let us have somebody who is going to proclaim before this man that here comes the man the king is well pleased with. Haman wanted to overthrow the king in the most tactical way when the king himself gives him his own authority. Then the king listened and said, well done, Haman. That's why I, that's why I chose you to be my advisor. Now, those things you've just said, hustle, do them for Mordecai. And remember, li listen to this. The Jew who sits at the king's gates. Do them hastily for Mordecai, the Jew who sits at the king's gates. When you read the, the book of Esther, it's always described. Why are they always repeating the Jew who sits at the king's gate? He's not a normal Jew. There are some people who wear their, wear their position right now. They need to be, re to be defined as Moses, the one who sits at this one's feet. This one, the one who sits at this strategic position. I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning, but I'm sent by God here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now your enemy is the one promoting you all over the streets everywhere. Isn't it a sweet victory? But the Bible says in Esther chapter 2, so Esther chapter 6 verse 12 that when all those things had happened and Mordecai returned to the place of assignment how many of us can when we've seen all the glory 
and the glamour. I know people in this room who would shift where they've been staying. But the Bible says, and Mordecai returned at the king's gate. Why? Because it was the place of assignment. The commander was yet to tell him that now leave this place. One of the reasons why missional communities are struggling is because when leaders get to a certain level, they forget about what they are doing that got them into that place. So we are losing as a team because those people have left their place of assignment. Hallelujah. Over-celebrating has been the main channel through which pride has crept into people's lives and ended their destinies prematurely. How many of us would control our souls when your all eyes are on you? Another man that said that his strategic position was Daniel. I'm talking about people who are going to be used by God in this season of revival. God is bringing us to light that there are certain people that are going to be influencers in certain places and that they need the humility that while they are there, they keep coming to church. They keep leading that mission of community. You keep opening your home to people to come and gather there for MC. Because God is going to do many amazing things. Amazing. Way beyond what we think. So this is about enlarging the bands, preparing ourselves what God is about to do. Cultivating a heart of humility to receive what God is going to do or what God is doing. Amen. Daniel chapter 2 verse 46. Daniel, God has used him to um, interpret dreams that had become a problem to the king and then uh, uh, the king honors him. You know that story? The Bible says Nebuchadnezzar fell prostrate on his face. Nebuchadnezzar worshipped Daniel. Ahasuerus gave Mordecai his mantle, his crown, and his thing, Brio Benz. But these men never left their place of assignment. Men of God who have come close to power have left their place of assignment. Today they are useless. They are a shadow of their former self. You start asking, where, was, where is this man? You can't find them because power got to their heads. The king can use you. Hallelujah. I don't know what I'm speaking to, but I'm speaking to somebody. Hallelujah. So Daniel, the king has fallen prostrate before him, and the king demanded that they should present an offering. Say offering. Money. They're even burning an incense, like they're worshipping him, even an altar is made. Like Daniel, they called him that he has the spirit, that, the spirit of the gods, that was like a god himself. The spirit of the gods is with him. There are things that he's, he can interpret that others kind of can't. When all the enchanters, all the Chaldeans, all the wisest men can't even disentangle the man can. When you hold power, let me tell you, when you know things that kings can't know, the only thing that kings can't know is tomorrow. And when you know tomorrow, you are in such a great position. That's what priests, that's what we have. Hallelujah. My prayer is that tonight uh, when we pray, I could release the prophetic. I, I have seen things happen with me. I know stuff before they happen. For example, I know everything that is going to happen by the time this service is going to end and now it's going to end. Dr. Emma helped me very much. He said, what did he say? The man came here 
and they received something. The prophet of this house has hoped and unlocked something about me. Hallelujah. And I'm going to share some of that later. So Daniel is given wealth, is it? Yeah? 47? The king said to Leo, blah, 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 blah. 49. The king promoted Daniel, gave him many great gifts, and made him ruler over the whole of the province of Babylon and the chief administrator over all the wise men of. Like when, when all the wise men, like the wisest of the wisest, you have power, you have wisdom, you have wealth. And all the things that corrupt our minds. Daniel had all of these things, but the Bible says, when Daniel was given to lead over Babylon, he requested the king. The Bible says he petitioned him and told him, look here, thank you so much for the titles, for the gifts, and for everything, but I would really love that these things be given to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, my, my, my brothers. And the Bible says, and Daniel remained at the king's court, which was the place of assignment. And if Daniel had become governor of Babylon, he would never have had the opportunity to be the prophet for Darius and for Belshazzar. Oh, they are getting it now. He returned to the place of assignment, which was the king's court. I'm talking about everyone getting to play and standing in their role. He said, Belshazzar, Abednego, I mean, Abednego, Mesach, and, and, and Shadrach, for them they can go and play that role of superintending over Babylon, Yan provinces, because we have Jews staying there. But as for me, I have to control the king. I don't leave the palace. There are men who are for us, but they are hidden. Allowed to be hidden to serve the purposes of God. Stay in that place of assignment. It may not be a place where you are over-celebrated. Most times we only get to see the guys who stand here with all the lights and everything, the film star, and the queen dancers. Right, that's, what, that's what people who don't believe in God think. That we come here, we perform, and people pay. That's why they say pastors are thieves. They are lying to you. They are using psychology. The enemy is a liar. Hallelujah. Have you seen the man return to the court? To return to the court, you must be in possession of a heart that is devoid of, of uh, pride, that you are not enchanted by money, by position and power. That is what can keep you in an assignment. Remember, you have a purpose to fulfill for your creation, but the enemy knows which things to bring to you to derail you from the purpose of your creation. Are you aware that for as long as you are not serving the purpose of your creation, you are useless? That a train is supposed to move on rails, not on tarmac. That when a train is not on the rails, it is scrap, scrap. I've never seen a ship moving on tarmac. They think called destiny, thank you. And destiny is birthed when you are on track when you are pursuing the purpose of your creation. Some people are wasting their lives somewhere else when they should be serving the Lord. Hallelujah. The reason why Daniel served several kings was that he was strategically positioned and he had the humility to stay in that position. Daniel chapter 5 verse 17 says, one day he came and minister to the king. Of course, his minister was the thing that you can't understand, I'm going to disentangle them for you. 
and then he helped him. The king said, I'm going to give you a lot of money. A, a man who will do this. You know kings have a way of saying all these things. Daniel told the man, look at how Daniel spoke to the man. Then Daniel answered the king and said before the king, let your gifts be for yourself and give your rewards to another. Yet I will still read the writings to the king and make known to him the interpretation. He was saying, do not corrupt me with those things. I'm not that level. I have served your grandfather. I've served your father. And I'm now serving you. Have you ever asked yourself the reason why I'm still here? If it was the man, I wouldn't be here. Hallelujah. Is somebody getting along with me? He was not excited about the things that excite many people. Many of us will be assigned to lead locations in the most difficult places, but will you stay in the place of assignment and serve the Lord? The mission can't be furthered when we refuse to be in our places of assignment, because that's the vantage position, vintage position from where God will fulfill his covenantal blessings, covenantal promises. There's a place where promises are fulfilled. He told Abraham, leave this place and go to this place and I'll make you become the father of all the nations. Amen. There is a place. There is a place. Humility is a choice we make to allow God to use us. It is not about us. It's about what God wants to do through us. So when you are allowed into a position, when you are allowed into a place, it's because God wants to do something there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must stay in our places of assignment to be used by God. When God uses you, he also lifts you because he wants it to be known that it is him who is working. And then when God wants to lift a man, he will create problems in certain places which will require that which God put on you to help people. Joseph was a dreamer who could interpret dreams. Just imagine how God brings trouble to kings and there is need for a man like you and me to come and fix this. People asking, God, I want you to use me, but God, when he wants to use you, he creates a problem somewhere. Hallelujah. Tonight we're going to pray. And as we pray, my prayer is that your heart be expectant, that you pray a prayer of faith, that the Lord will do something new. I have ministered in many places and people are saying, revival, revival, but where is it? The year has come to an end and some people are yet to experience revival. Some people are expecting a mighty wind with dust flowing all over Uganda. They said, there is revival. Hallelujah. But God is already working. God is already working. In every revival, God raises up a generation of people who understand what he wants to do in a particular dispensation of time. He makes anointings available. Mantles are falling from some people to other people in a revival. That's the purpose of a revival. That some new people can take on the purposes of God. That the mission can keep going. That's the purpose of the revival. And tonight I have the privilege of praying with you that many shall be ushered into their destiny. That the Daniels, that the Josephs, that the Davids, that the Mordecais, who are in their places of assignment, can be led into that place. And that they can be encouraged to stay there. Hallelujah. We are going to stand on our feet and pray. Father, by the power of your word tonight, I am praying that you encounter us. I have seen you change and transform my life. Through humility, putting everything and sitting under man who has hoped me, Lord. Esther needed Mordecai. There are many in this room, Lord, who you want to help. You have helped put them into positions, but some do not understand why they are where they are. Everyone is getting to play their role, gets the mission forward. 
my prayer king of glory is that you help us if you can pray and speak in tongues please do help us oh lord help us jesus we love you we want you to use us it's not about us it's about you take all the glory take all the honor use me when i read the bible i want this to be true for me if you use Daniel, you could use me. If you use Mordecai, you could use me. Give me the humility that you gave to Mordecai. Zebra damando, sakaya lava. Lebre de debo shakala manda. Pala prada baba sobre kababa. Lele le barando zamaya lele barakata prado zebrele. Raparato zabala prada mando zalaba. Reke lele lele lebo bosha bala rande baba. Father, even those that had been derailed from the course that you set for them. They were a powerful MC leader. They were a powerful court shepherd. But because the enemy derailed them, Lord, may you bring alignment. Your children, oh God, your children, that you may lead them to that place where you've assigned for them. Give us the humility to stay in the place for our lifting. Many of us have been too excited to leave our place of assignment. And when God called on us, we were not available. Because we had, we had been enchanted by wealth, by power. Many destinies have been aborted because of the excitement of the things that excite men. Remind us that we are spirits. Remind us that we are spirits. Remind us of oh God. The Bible says that you are gods. Yes, you are sons of God. And these are the days that you said in Isaiah chapter 2 verse 2 that in those days the mountain of the Lord is house. Lord, this is our time as children of God to thrive, to rule and to colonize, to bring the will of the Father here. Thank you, Jesus. You could lift up your hands as I pray for people. Them that have all sorts of sickness, may they be healed in the name of Jesus. Them that you are empowering to raise the banner of Christ in the nations. The nations. Hallelujah. And as you lift up your hands, close your eyes and pray. The people that God is empowering to go into the nations to colonize to colonize power is your portion may the lord use you receive that the nations the father of this house is a global movement leader and that is our inheritance right now at the count of three an anointing is coming down on people receive it receive it in the nations shall be your portions receive that grace receive it there are people who are going to be prophets to leaders and as i speak now you are seeing certain things prophets The things you see in your dreams are real. The gift of prophecy is with you, but it needs to be unlocked. In the name of Jesus, Father, may you help them. Receive it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The prophetic. God is speaking to many people. She's a prophet. Prophets that the Lord is bringing. The people that you are going to interpret for are very important people. You will know things before they happen and you help those in power. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it. You are going to be a solution provider. As David was, so you are going to be. There are people here 
whose voices I bring healing. Your voices mean something to somebody. And at the count of three, a certain anointing is going to come down on you. Father, in the name of Jesus, count me worthy to pass this on to others. There are days you wake up and there is a song on your tongue and you're worshipping it and you don't know why. Because you worship with the angels, you are always in the presence. Your spirit, that grace is coming down on three people now. In the name of Jesus, at the count of three, receive it. When you see Pastor Angie worshipping, there are angels worshipping with her. I have seen them many times. The same is with you because you are carrying, you've carried that from her. And tonight, as a demonstration of the reality of that truth, something is happening with you right now. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Jesus, help them. Help them, Jesus. Cast them to their destiny. Bring alignment. Bring alignment. Bring alignment. Bring alignment. Many had been derailed. They had been amazing, but the enemy had derailed them from the purpose. Amazing leaders whom the enemy had derailed from the purpose which you created them. And by the sound of this voice, in the name of Jesus, may there be alignment. Alignment to the purposes of God. The power to stay in the place of assignment. Humility. And God is also going to heal some people of sicknesses. Them that have sicknesses of all kinds. He is Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. And as we lift up our hands, God is healing people. Sicknesses are going away in the name of Jesus. Our bodies are disease-free zones. We are not only going to be healed, but we are also going to heal. May the grace to heal the sick be with you. An anointing to heal. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Several people here, that thing is going to be with you. The Lord is going to cause you. One of the things that God does when he brings about alignment is that he gives them, he unlocks something that the devil had tried to snatch away from them. And by the power of the word that has been preached this morning, may that thing be with you. The healing grace, it is released to you. It is released to you. They are teachers of the word in this place. Just like Pastor B3, you are also going to teach. And when you teach, they will understand. Lift up your hands if you desire that. Father, in the name of Jesus, my teaching changed since I came under up more. Lord, many people, they need to change how they teach. They need to get to that point where they teach and others understand. In the name of Jesus, one of the things that's going to happen is that your tongue is going to change right now. Somebody, you're going to feel like something has been put on your tongue. It's like, like, like a, a burning coal on your tongue. In the name of Jesus, at the count of three, receive it in the name of Jesus. It is happening with people. The teaching grace. Even in your mission and community, they say she teaches like Pastor B3. This person teaches like Abmo. Hallelujah. Receive it. It's a grace. The last thing I want to pray for is influence in the courts of power. There are people who are going to be promoted into positions of influence. You could be working in an office, you could be working somewhere, and the power of this message, the light of the word of God, is going to lift you and promote you. Father, many people have served you in oblivion, 
faithfully with humility. They have even been forgotten. But the Bible says that there is a book of remembrance and Mordecai was remembered. And he was promoted much to the chagrin of his enemies. Lord, in the name of Jesus, there are people here who have been blocked from their promotion. And by the power of the sword, Lord, you are bringing a lifting. In the name of Jesus, at the count of three, may the Lord lift you. Thank you, Jesus, for them that you are setting in the courts of kings. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Take your glory, Jesus. Take all the glory. Take all the glory. Take all the glory. For them that you are casting into their destinies, take all the glory. May you remind us to stay in our places of assignment. You help men. You take them from a position of insignificance to a place where the world sees them. But when they get there, like Esther, they start getting worried, fearful. Remind us always, Jesus, of the purpose of our creation. Remind us always why we are where we are. Because when we are doing what put us where we are, everyone is getting to play and the mission is getting forward. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Come and clap for Jesus. While we put our hands together for Jesus one more time. Apostle, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for what you have unleashed in this place today. And may you see the fruit for what you have delivered here today. That even as we go out this morning, come to the end of our service, there's people out there who have never had a relationship with Jesus Christ. You might be here in the room today. You might be watching us online. You might be listening to us on radio. I want to give you an opportunity to make that decision today. Because everything that Apostle has taught here today, it starts with that relationship with Jesus Christ. The recognition that God saw a lost people. And the only way he could win us back was him paying the price for it. And that's why Jesus came. You know in your life that you have struggled so many times to do things right. But the more you struggle, the more you find that you are going astray. And you've probably come to that point in your life and you say, you know what, I give up, I can't do it. And that's where God steps in. And he says that if you can't do it, I will do it for you. And that's the whole purpose of Jesus. And so by receiving Jesus in your life, you are telling God, I give up. You take charge. What I can't do for myself, you can do for me. You can make me right before your very own eyes. And so if you want to get born again today, you say, look, I've had that and I want some of it. I'm going to invite you to put up your hand where you are right now so that we can pray with you. I'm going to give it a minute so that you can make that decision today. Anybody wants to get born again today? I see a hand. Thank you very much, my brother. I see that hand. He's broken the ice. Is there another hand? I'm looking up in the gallery. I'm going to ask you to come with him. I'm sure he's not the only one. Oh, there's another hand. Amazing. My brother, you are most welcome.
So pray with them. If you're online, I'm going to ask you to repeat these words after me. And say, Jesus, thank you that you laid down your life that I might live. Thank you that you have forgiven all my sins. And this morning, I receive the gift of salvation. By believing you are the son of God and that you came to save me. Today, I confess with my lips that I am born again. Take my life and do something significant with it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask you to follow Pastor Kathy. She's going to take your details so that we can keep in touch with you. Thank you so much. And we bless God for your decision. I want to pray for anybody who is unwell today in this house. That in the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus that cleanses from all unrighteousness. And the power of the Holy Spirit that is present today. Will heal every disease. It doesn't matter what disease it is. That right now in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance. Receive your freedom. In the mighty name of Jesus I have declared. Amen. Amen. So. We've come to the end of our service. Thank you so much for joining us today. Our first time guests. We are going to meet you. There's a special area set up in the back, just behind me here. There's a special area with chairs set up for you. You will meet part of our team there where they will celebrate you and they'll tell you a little bit more about us and they will have a gift for you. Yeah. And so, with the, as we come to the end of our service, I want us to share in the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Our next service starts at 11.30. God bless you and may you have a victorious week.